one. Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. As many of you know, I went and purchased 21 head of beef cattle about a month ago. As such, I've been looking around for a skid loader to keep out of my place due to the fact that right now we're doing a lot of road travel with our current skid loader and I think it would save us a lot of time and wear and tear on the tires. So I believe that having one out there would really be beneficial to us. One company heard that I was looking for skid loaders and I even actually hopped into one uh, in one of my previous videos. And as such, I am announcing that to, starting today, we're gonna be demoing a new skid loader on the farm for the next month. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. This thing is huge to me. Uh, mostly because it has double the current lifting capacity of our current skid loader. So, as such, they're about to pull in, so why don't we go and say hi. Yep. Okay. Yeah, just key on to the let everything cycle. Your dart started to the right. Simple. All right. So the JCB has arrived. We are here with Ashby from Savannah, Georgia. She came all the way from JCB to give us a run around on the machine so we can hop in it and have a little bit of know how on how to run it. So, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about the machine itself? Yeah. All right. So, here's the JCB Teleskid, the 3TS 8T. Uh, we do have two models of this machine. We have a wheeled and a tracked version. Today we're just going to look at the uh, the tracked version of the machine, which is our highest uh, highest seller at the moment. Uh, as you know, the market is moving more towards tracked machines over mm -hmm. wheeled machines, especially the last few years. Um, so we'll we'll look at the tracked. Um, this particular machine's got a rated operator capacity with the boom extended about 3,600 pounds and once it's extended it's about 2,300 pounds rated operating capacity so it'll definitely do what you, you need it to do around the farm here. Let's just start at the front of the machine yep. and we'll, we'll talk about the quick hitch itself here. So it is a fully enclosed quick hitch. Uh, you do have a single indicator point here when you're unlocking and locking your attachments. Um, that way it makes it nice and easy for the operator to see. They don't have to look at two indicators when they're in the machine. Okay. Also unique to JCB is the wear plates here on each side. Those are actually reversible. Only skid steer quick hitch in the industry that has reversible plates on oh, them currently. Cool. So as the, the edge wears down, unbolt it, flip the plate, you've got a whole other side that you could use instead of replacing the entire quick hitch itself. That's a good idea. So, so that's just for JCB. Okay, if we move over to the... Um, 
right side of the machine, we've got two sets of auxiliary couplers. You've got your standard flow couplers here, and then you've got your high flow couplers here. Um, now, as the boom does extend, your standard flow couplers are going to come out with the boom nose. And then, of course, your high flow couplers are going to remain standard. So okay. if you're extended and you want to run a grapple or anything like that, perfectly fine. Hook up your hoses to your standard flow. When it's retracted, and let's say you wanted to put a, uh, a high flow mower or something on the machine, you'd use these sets of couplers. Okay. You also have a release here to release any of your auxiliary pressure. And you've got a 14 pin connector for any multifunction attachments as well, right here on the corner. Awesome. So looking at the undercarriage here, um, you got solid cast steel rollers on the bottom, triple flange on your last four, double on your front, help keep that track on. Uh, you do have a track tensioning plate right here. Take that plate off, pump in some grease, to keep your track nice and tensioned mm -hmm. uh, correctly. Uh, to the proper spec. You also have your fuel fill point here as well. Alright, so let's move on to the back of the machine. You've got a large rear opening door here. You've got a JCB engine, tier 4 final. No DPF, no DEF fluid required either. Um, all your daily service checks are easily grouped together as well. Okay. You've got your fuel filter, your oil filter, your dipstick, your hydraulic sight gauge here, your air filter here. Uh, it's got an active scavenging air filter just to help extend your air filter service life as long as possible. Uh, this is a battery isolator, so if you just needed to disconnect your battery, just pop this right out. This is an emergency, emergency boom lowering valve here. So let's say the boom's up in the air and you have an emergency and you need to lower your boom. Just crack that valve and it'll slowly just drift your arm back down nice and safely to the okay. ground. Okay. As far as airflow on the machine, it is going to come into the part right there. It's going to go alongside the chassis, up under here into your air filter. And then your other airflow is going to come through the top grill here and then out over the end and out the back. So this does have a removable top grill if you yep. needed to clean it off or anything like that. Okay. It also comes with a reversing fan, the right. standard on the machine. So you've got Every 15 minutes, it'll automatically reverse, or you know, if you're really running in a dusty environment or something, and you want to manly, manually override it, just press and hold the button, and it'll override and automatically run the reversing fan at that point. Cool. How long does the reversing fan run automatically? Just a couple seconds. A couple seconds? Yeah, That's all can, it needs? Yeah, you can hear it come down, reverse, blow it off, and then it'll go back to the normal direction. Okay. So, so that's the rear of the machine. You do have on the bottom, of the chassis there. You do have a clean out plate as well uh, on the very bottom if you ever needed to clean anything out. Okay. Um, it's also where you're going to drain your oil and stuff. Awesome. Alright, so now we're going to be in the cab of the machine. When the left hand control pod comes down, your lap bar comes down. Then, okay. always safety first, seat belt on the left, right to the left. Okay. Alright, once you're in the machine, you key on here. Let everything cycle through and then you'll hard start the key to the right to start the engine. You've got your hand throttle up here. You also have your foot throttle down here as well. To get going and actually start to operate the machine, all you have to do is release the parking brake once and it'll make your controls live at that point. You also have your work lights. You have an auxiliary lockout or, uh, for your loader arm here as well if you wanted those independent of your parking brake. This auxiliary button here is what's going to unlock your auxiliaries if you did want to run a uh, hydraulic attachment such as a grapple or something like that. Then this is going to be actually your bi-directional self level. So it's going to keep it the bucket level on the raise and the lower and you just hit that button to turn that on. Okay. If we move over to the left hand side of the control panel here, you'll see your lock and your unlock, you're unlocking your lock uh, for your quick hitch. You'll just press and hold that to unlock it. Okay. And then press and hold to lock it in place again. And remember, you have that single point indicator on the front of the quick hitch as well. All right. This button here is actually our SRS or our smooth ride system. What that does is it actually allows the button the bucket to be cushioned as you're riding over the rough terrain. Helps keep the material inside the bucket, but also makes it a more comfortable ride for the operator as well. Awesome. It's a really, really nice feature. This is your reversing fan button. Remember when I said you could uh, press and manually hold it? You'll just press, it'll actually start to flash, and that's when you can manually override uh, the automatic reversing fan. All right. 
This is going to be your high flow button. If you did want to put like a high flow brush cutter or something like that on the machine. And then obviously here we have our ISO and H pattern changeover. So if you did want to run it in H pattern, you could quickly just change it over there. Cool. Radio standard in the teleskid, and of course your heat and AC controls. Emergency exit for the machine is actually through the front of the machine here. It's not out over the back as in traditional twin arm skid steers. Once again, we try and make it as safe as we can for our operators. Okay. You'll also notice that we don't have the traditional mesh over glass on the right side or the left side of the door. More visibility. Excellent visibility for the operator. 60% better, better visibility than a conventional twin arm skid steer. Yeah. When an operator can see what they're doing, they're going to be safer and they're going to be more confident in what they're doing. They're also going to be more productive as well. Okay. So if we move on to the controls, we've got seven way controls as standard uh, on the JCB telescope. Yeah. So then uh, just going over a couple of the main buttons here, you've got your horn on your top here, the bottom button is going to be your um, two speed. You're going to have your auxiliary and your creep speed as well, which you can actually adjust up here on the top control panel. You'll see what percentage you are. Okay. Creep speed, what that does is allows you to adjust your top speed but maintain your full power. So let's say you needed to use a trencher or something on the farm and you wanted to have a set um, speed in the machine but not having to constantly adjust the joystick here. Mm -hmm. You'll just set that creep to let's say 60%, right? Uh, you get 60% of your top speed, but yet you have your full flow and everything power, and you just press and hold, pull, hold that button or the joystick down right there. Awesome. On the right hand side, you've got your float here, so the boom does need to be all the way down. Engage float. You'll actually have an indicator up on the right hand side there to let you know you're in float, and that's just going to allow the bucket to follow the contours of the ground as you back drag. Okay. Then this important button here is actually going to be your extend and retract on the machine. Oh, really? So this is what's going to move the boom out Good and then back in. So the other buttons are just some auxiliary buttons uh, if you have multifunction attachments that you'll use. Okay. Just one more thing from a serviceability standpoint, because we have the crowd cylinder tucked into the boom nose as well, it does allow the cab to be tilted forward um, without having to have the boom raised as well. So just making it nice and easy from a serviceability standpoint. Cool. It's probably a lot safer to have it on the ground while you're servicing it. Then yeah. because we only have the, the one arm on the side, it does give you full access from the left side of the machine to the uh, to the belly of the machine. Okay. It's even got a little window. That's nice. I didn't see that the first time around. How far does this extend? We've got about eight feet forward reach. Awesome. <laughs> That was awesome. How high can this reach? Your hinge pin is 13.3. Really? The dump trucks, feed mixers, all that good stuff, you'll have plenty of height to, to reach it. Without What's, having to do a ramp or anything else. What do you recommend we run the engine speed at? It's really operator preference. I mean, okay. it's, it, it really is. It depends on what you're doing application-wise.
it's P for parking brake. That'll get the machine live, and then really all you need to know right now, other than all this other fancy stuff, is uh, just use the throttle over there, the foot pedal. After five seconds, if you don't you do anything, the machine will automatically throttle down, but you can turn that off in the settings, which I'll show you another time. Yep, now it's out of park. Flotation. I'm really looking forward to using this JCB Teleskid for the next 30 days and uh, I noticed earlier with the tracks that it had a lot better flotation than the 773 on manure. So we'll see what it can do. We're definitely going to give it a run for its money over the next 30 days and uh, be sure to keep an eye out for our next video. Uh, you can see that we have Big Red back there. Uh, we are going to be hauling some corn out this week. Um, we're just doing a few last preps on the truck and it's good to go. So with that, uh, I'll be doing some more videos on the JCB as time comes. But with that, I'll let you all go. Thanks for watching this video guys. Be sure to check out all of our other ones. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. All how farms work. And with that, I'll see you next time.